guys? Welcome to another Swords and Churches. Today, we are going to make, well, we're not going to make the welcome mat, but I'm gonna show you a really easy way to put your own decoration on a plain welcome mat, which you will be surprised just how easy this process is. So what you're going to need is a plain welcome mat, which is off camera right now, but it wasn't all that expensive and you can find them at a lot of places. You're also going to need some form of spray paint that says that it can be used on wicker. There are obviously other types of welcome mats that you can get, but the wicker ones look the coolest when you're done. So I encourage you to do that. One or two colors, depending on how much depth you want, and I'll show you how to do both processes. And then you're just gonna need some cardstock so that you can make your stencil. So today, the theme is going to be one of my favorite games, Street Fighter, and we are going to do a Hadoken welcome mat. So to start off with, what we're gonna wanna do is we really only have two shapes that we need to make. The arrow shape and either a fist or an A button. But I think that a fist is gonna look a little bit cooler. So we're going to start with the more complex one. We're gonna make kind of an abstract fist shape. And if you don't feel comfortable doing this, I'm going to upload all of these stencils as a template that you can just download and print off. But I'm going to uh, start off making my fist because then whatever size that winds up being, it's very easy to make an arrow that will be a similar size so that it all looks really nice. There's really like no instructions for this. I'm just kinda, just kinda gonna go for it. I have kind of a basic idea of what I want it to look like in my mind, so. We'll just do it, right? Cool. All right, so it took a couple tries, but I think I settled on a design that I kind of like. It doesn't matter if your lines are a little bit squiggly because you can just cut it out. You know, it's not gonna show up on the final product because it's a stencil, so it's no big. So from here, we're going to try to make an arrow that is approximately the same size as this. It doesn't you know, need to be exactly, but it needs to have the same visual weight as the fist so that they all look kind of uniform. So I'm gonna grab another piece and arrows are really nice because they're all just straight lines. So assuming that you have an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, you can kind of figure out you know, where the four and a quarter inch mark is. So right here is the midway point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to line these up and that way I can take this tool, which I know that not all of you are gonna have this, but it winds up being really nice for this project in particular, where I can just kind of line it up like this. But of course, if you don't have this, you can just take your ruler and kind of eyeball it and even fold it in half if you want to make sure that it's uniform on both sides. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a little bit above it so that I can actually see what I'm doing. And we're gonna kind of try to gauge where the top of this would be and take my pen and then kind of measure with my fingers how wide I want this to wind up being. So we'll say I want it to be about that wide. Then what's cool is I can just pull this away and then kind of, again, eyeball it because it doesn't matter if these lines are on the final product. Do that. And there we have the top part. And from there, it's just lines, making sure that um, you know it comes in the same amount on either side. And then you wind up with a pretty cool arrow. So we have our two basic shapes. We have the fist and we have the arrow. We're gonna cut those out. I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife. Um, you can use scissors, it's just a little bit harder. And then with the cutout of this arrow, we can make the other two arrows that we're going to wind up needing. So we have our first arrow cut out, and so now with the cut out portion of the arrow, we need a diagonal right arrow and then an actual right arrow, because that's how you do the Hadouken. So we can actually just line these up like this. I'm gonna use a similar just kind of eyeballing sort of technique, say to myself, okay, so that's about center. I want it to be pointing toward this corner, and if I want, I can take my ruler and kind of do this and make sure 
they're going to be where they need to be. Scoot it around a little bit until it looks right and then you can just outline it and cut it out again. So we're gonna do that with the other two arrows and then we will have all of our stencils done. What's nice is that even if it winds up not being in the specific right spot on the page, we're going to be taping all of these so that they're right, so that they won't move around and so that they'll be a good stencil all together. So if it turns out that like, say, an issue that I actually did, uh, so this, in the whole scheme of things, is going to be an upside down arrow, but I cut it as though it was going to be an upward arrow. So it looks like it's not in the same line as this, but when I tape it, I can just move this up and then tape them together, and it's not a big deal. We have all of our stencils cut out, so now the next part of the process is making sure that we can get them all on here, but evenly spaced, which can be kind of hard sometimes. So, got all these, we can just kind of eyeball it. And of course, you can cut off anything that you need to to make sure that it all fits on there and it's all gonna look super awesome because that is the point, obviously. Sometimes uh, I have to like stand up and look at it from afar. Whatever you gotta do to make sure that it's fairly evenly spaced. P.S. If you do this inside like I'm doing it right now, you're gonna get wicker er aware. It's just, it's part of the process. It's not a big deal. Okay, so now that they're all in place, you can use whatever tape you have on hand. I always have lots of blue tape hanging around. So we're gonna tape these and obviously don't cover any of the cutout parts, but it can go wherever it needs to go to make sure that it's all gonna stay put. So let's do this. Make sure you don't use all of your tape because you're eventually going to need to also tape this down to the mat, most likely. If it seems like it's flipping out and getting everywhere, then that's probably gonna be the case. Okay, this one's a little bit tricky because it's right up against where the opening is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna tape above and below it because I don't wanna mess with that. And there we go. There's our stencil. It looks crazy sauce, but it's gonna work. <laughs> so now we're just gonna move to a well-ventilated area or outside, which is my preference and spray paint this down. And I'll show you again, like I said, how to do it with one color or how to do it with two. Some people think that the two tone looks really cool, but if you're the sort of minimal person like I am, I like just one clean color. So we'll see how both possibilities look. All right, we're ready. So I have some tape so that I can keep it in the right spot. So I'm gonna do that just really quick. Just gonna tape down the sides like this. And it feels like it's gonna be kind of wiggly, but just taping it down in a couple small spots will actually help a lot. So now, got our indoor outdoor spray paint, specifically says on it that wicker works. Pinch and pull. Oh good, I was worried that that wasn't going to turn out for me. You don't want to lift the stencil right away. Because if you do, there's a possibility that some of the weird pools of paint that are on the stencil are going to spill off and it's just gonna be weird. So just let it sit for a second. And when you lift it up, if it turns out that it's not as dark as you want, you can always do another coat. Yeah! So there's our first one. Our first Hadouken mat. Now that we've done this one, we can do one that has two colors, and those sometimes are pretty fun. So now we're gonna do two colors, and whatever color you want to be kind of the shadow of the top color, make sure to do that one first. I've done it in reverse before. It still looks fine, but not the way that I had intended. So our first layer is gonna be white. So you're gonna do the same thing that you did before. When you have really small details like this in the fist, Make sure that you're spraying from a little bit of a distance, just because otherwise, sometimes the paint can settle underneath where the paper is and your details would be a little bit muddy. Okay, so it's very faint. It's definitely a different color. Next time I probably would use kind of a slate gray or something like that, something that has a little bit more body to it, but this is definitely gonna do what we need it to do. So the way that we're going to make it so that it has kind of a shadowy effect 
is we're going to take it and just shift the stencil a little bit this way. Now I know that it's hard to see, but you want it to be so that there's a little bit of this normal color and mostly the color that you did the first round of. It's gonna give it kind of a graffiti look, which I like. So then you just use your original tape, just tape it back down in place. Uh, sometimes with the smaller details on something, the stencil can start to warp. If you need to take a little bit of tape and make sure that it's pat down in place, go ahead and do that, no biggie. All right, so on this, the arrows wound up looking okay. I don't think that the black paint that I used this time around did quite as good of a coverage job as I wanted. And the fist kind of lost a little bit of the details, but again, that's what happens when the stencil starts to warp. So I should have taken a second and kind of taped it down a little bit. But you get the idea of what layering the paint can look like. And there's so many different options for things that you can do with this. I still really like the way that the first one came out. And this one is all right, because mistakes are not a big deal. So we have completed the task of making our own personalized welcome mat. I hope that you enjoyed watching. And if you attempt this project, I would love to see pictures or a video response, really anything. It would be so much fun for me. And if there are any materials that I used, and you would like to find them and possibly purchase them for yourself, I will put links and a list in the description. But otherwise, I hope that you guys had an amazing time watching, and I will see you again on the next Swords and Stitches. Bye-bye.